Welcome to the Statsburg State Historic Site, the Gilded Age home of Ruth Livingston and Ogden Mills. My name is Frank Padala. I am a historic interpreter. I conduct tours and special programs here at the museum. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at some of the history behind the local ice harvesting industry, a couple of the original ice boxes that are located here throughout the museum, as well as the industry's connections to the Mills estate. So let's take a closer look. Ice harvesting was a major industry throughout the Hudson Valley and the state of New York. It provided a means for the transportation and refrigeration of perishable goods almost year-round in a time before electric refrigeration. From 1870 up until the 1950s, ice harvesting was conducted along the Hudson River, mostly north of Poughkeepsie, New York as it was at this point in the Hudson River that the water was no longer saline, that is salt water, but fresh water. Ice harvesting began in January, and on average, continued for about six to eight weeks or until ice houses were filled. The ice season was very limited, and ice had to be at least 10 inches thick to be cut, as there was a certain amount of melting that would occur in storage and transit. Men accompanied by horses often worked 10 hours a day and seven days a week. Work was extremely difficult, but welcomed as it provided local farmers and estate workers with an income in the winter months and year round. First, the ice would be cleared of any snow or debris on its surface by horse-drawn plows. It would then be measured and scored into a grid by horse-drawn saws. The long lengths of ice were then cut and floated towards the shore in open water channels. Once they neared the ice house on shore, a final cut was made with a 4 to 5 foot long handheld saw. The ice was moved into the ice house by a steam-powered elevator or conveyor belt the entrance of which was positioned just below the river surface, allowing workers to hook the floating ice blocks with poles onto the elevator. Once inside the ice house, the ice blocks were insulated by sawdust or hay between each layer. This would prevent the blocks from melting and sticking together. From the months of March onward, the demand for ice began. The ice would be put onto barges to be shipped and sold in New York City. A tugboat would haul the barges south, and each barge could carry anywhere from 400 to 1,000 tons of ice. There were at least 9 to 10 private ice houses located in Statsburg, New York. This was in addition to the various ice companies that operated locally the most famous of which was the Knickerbocker Ice Company that had a factory in Statsburg, which by 1897 employed over 200 men locally. But the Knickerbocker Ice Company had over a dozen business operations extending from Rockland, Dutchess, Columbia County, and beyond, employing over 10,000 men regionally and harvesting nearly 1 million tons of ice each year. According to the Poughkeepsie Eagle in 1889, the Knickerbocker Ice Company's location in Statsburg had a storage capacity of 25,000 tons of ice. According to the Poughkeepsie Courier in 1896, the ice house on the Mills Estate, likely located here behind the estate's power plant, had a capacity for over 500 tons of ice. Most ice houses were filled to over one-third of their capacity, as by the spring and summer months, much of their ice supply would have melted away. Statsburg would become one of the leading municipalities in the ice industry, thanks to its location on the Hudson, as well as some leading innovative and cutting-edge technology in local business. One such business was Bodenstein's Ice Tool Factory, Later known as the Statsburg Ice Tool Factory, it was originally founded by German immigrant 
John Henry Bodenstein in the late 1850s. This business was operated by four generations of the Bodenstein family, which manufactured a variety of ice tools and later masonry tools up until the 1980s. The factory was two buildings located on River Road at Church Street in the center of town. The original plant dated to 1888, but was destroyed by a fire in 1919. It was then rebuilt the next year in 1920 by carpenters of the Ogden Mills Farm. Tools invented and manufactured at the Statsburg Ice Tool Company were of high quality and were distributed widely. To this day, you can find Statsburg Ice Tools being collected and sold across the country and internationally. So now that we have some historical context, let's take a quick look at the two ice boxes here in the mansion. So once the ice was brought up from the estate's ice house down by the river, it would likely come up to the mansion's basement where it would be stored here in this ice box. Here we can see the maker's mark that says the Lorillard 1168 Broadway which today would be located in the Flatiron District in New York City, near 23rd Street. The Lorillard Refrigerator Company was established in New York in 1877 and was in business until at least 1920. The Lorillard ice boxes were some of the highest priced refrigerators on the market and were sold to millionaire clients' homes, like that of Andrew Carnegie and George Vanderbilt, the latter of whom had five Lorillard refrigerators installed in his mansion, Biltmore, in Asheville, North Carolina. Lorillard refrigerators often advertise their ice boxes as being used at leading institutions, hotels, and restaurants across the country. Locations included the Waldorf Astoria and the Plaza Hotels, the Union and Knickerbocker Clubs, hospitals such as Presbyterian and Roosevelt, and even U.S. Navy warships. A 1902 ad also has the Lorillard referencing architects who endorsed and accepted their refrigerators. Architects like George Post, Horace Trumbauer, Daniel Burnham of the Flatiron Building, and Statsburg's architects McKim Mead, and Stanford White. Our lower lard refrigerator appears to be glass lined, which would help insulate the ice and keep it from melting. From here, the ice could then be brought up the servant's staircase to the butler's pantry, where additional ice boxes could help keep perishables, champagne, and even hors d'oeuvres ice cold before being served at dinner. Perhaps the mills' butler or footman would use this ice shaver to create a bed of ice to present clams, oysters, and other shellfish on. With the introduction of the electric refrigerator, people no longer needed to worry about filling their ice boxes. Still, the ice industry would persist up until the 1950s, until the electric refrigerator became more affordable and practical for middle-class families to own. That's today's history lesson. We hope you enjoyed the video and look forward to seeing you again soon.